Good morning, friends, and a very warm welcome to our Word for Wednesday. I hope you're all safe and well, and we are indeed so thankful for technology at this time. Who would have thought a few months ago that this would be our mode of worship? But God does provide. A sincere thanks to Joanne for her expertise. Our worship may be diff styled differently, but our aim and hope is to honour God and bring him all the glory and the praise. This morning, my thanks go to Maureen, Liz, Joanne and Darian for his music. Our call to worship is from Psalm 16 verses 1 to 3. Protect me, O God, I trust in you for safety. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. All the good things I have come from you. How excellent are the Lord's faithful people. My greatest pleasure is to be with them. Heavenly Father, great and mighty, wonderful, loving God, we come before you to worship and praise you and ask your blessing on all who are gathered in your name. Be with us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Keep our minds concentrated on the many bountiful blessings of life you have bestowed on us and help us to remember how you endured hardships and discomfort, perils and danger and gave your life so that every person who believes in you may have abundant life. Make our hearts tender to care for the needy and share the good news of your love with others. 
Lord and most merciful Father, you have given us a commandment that we should love one another. Give us grace that we may fulfill that commandment and direct our lives so that we may look for the good in one another. Grant that your love may so fill our lives that we may count nothing too small to do for you, nothing too much to give, and nothing too hard to bear. Fill us, with, we pray, with your light and life, that we may show forth your wondrous glory and accept our praises and our thanksgivings for your infinite mercies towards us. Lord, teach us to love you more and serve you better. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today's reading is from Daniel 6, verses 1 to 28. Daniel in the Pit of Lions. Darius decided to appoint 120 governors to hold office throughout his empire. In addition, he chose Daniel and two others to supervise the governors and to look after the king's interests. Daniel soon showed that he could do better work than the other supervisors or governors. Because he was so outstanding, the king considered putting him in charge of the whole empire. Then the other supervisors and the governors tried to find something wrong with the way that Daniel administered the empire, but they couldn't. Because Daniel was reliable and did not do anything wrong or dishonest. They said to one another, we are not going to find anything of which to accuse Daniel unless it is something in connection with his religion. So they went to see the king and said, King Darius, may your majesty live forever. All of us who administer your empire, the supervisors and the other officials have agreed that your majesty should issue an order and enforce it strictly. Give orders that for 30 days no one be permitted to request anything from any god or from any man, except from your majesty. Anyone who violates this order is to be thrown into a pit filled with lions. So let your majesty issue this order and sign it, and it will be in force a law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be changed. And so King Darius signed the order. When Daniel learned that the order had been signed, he went home. In an upstairs room of his house, there were windows that faced towards Jerusalem. There, just as he had always done, he knelt down at the open windows and prayed to God three times a day. When Daniel's enemies observed him praying to God, all of them went together to the king to accuse Daniel. They said, Your Majesty, you signed an order for the next 30 days. Anyone who requested anything from God, any God, or from any man except you, would be thrown into a pit filled with lions. The king replied, Yes, a strict order, a law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be changed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, one of the exiles from Judah, does not respect your majesty or obey the order you, you issued. He prays regularly three times a day. When the king heard this, he was upset and did his best to find some way to rescue Daniel. He kept trying until sunset. Then the men came back to the king and said to him, Your majesty? knows that according to the laws of Medes and Persians, no order which the king issues can be changed. So the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested, and he was thrown into the pit filled with lions. He said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve so loyally, rescue you. A stone was put over the mouth of the pit, 
and the king placed his own royal seal and the king a seal of him and his a seal of his nobleman on the stone so that no one could rescue Daniel then the king returned to the palace and spent a sleepless night without food or any form of entertainment at dawn the king got up and hurried to the pit when he got there he called out anxiously Daniel servant of the living God was the God you serve so loyally able to save you from the lions and Daniel answered may your majesty live forever God sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions so that they would not hurt me he did this because he knew that I was innocent and because I have not wronged you your majesty the king was overjoyed and gave orders for Daniel to be pulled up out of the pit so they pulled him up and saw that he had not been hurt at all for he trusted God then the king gave orders to arrest all the men who had accused Daniel and they were thrown together with their wives and children into the pit filled with lions before they even reached the bottom of the pit the lions pounced on them and broke all their bones then King Darius wrote to the people of all nations races languages on earth greetings I command that throughout my empire everyone should fear and respect Daniel's God he is a living God and he will rule forever his kingdom will never be destroyed and his power will never come to an end he saves and rescues he performs wonders and miracles in heaven and on earth he saved Daniel from being killed by the lions. Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Amen. And may God bless to us this reading from his holy word. Dare to be a Daniel. I have decided on this title for my reflection for a family reason. Let me explain. Two weeks ago, we were overjoyed to learn that my younger grandson, Daniel, age seven, was now clear of the cancer he had been fighting after six months of chemo, which, in a grand's opinion, he had endured with great courage. Not that I am biased. God is good. And as a family, we are indebted to all the prayers offered on his behalf. That's the inspiration for this morning's talk. The book of Daniel in the Old Testament is a great read. The first six chapters contain accounts of faith that inspire both young and old. And the last six are filled with visions and prophecies of future biblical events. It is a challenging read. But Christians should be continually on a learning curve with their faith, for we are a work in progress. Now, the Daniel events go back over 600 years before Jesus was born. God's special people, the Jews, did not obey God. So God allowed the king of Babylon, modern day Iraq, to defeat them. The king, King Nebuchadnezzar, forced most Jews to live in Babylon, exiled a long way from home. Daniel became an exile. And as a 15 year old, he was there until an old man of 90. And because of his good background, he came from nobility and education in Israel, he was chosen to serve in the royal court, learning the Babylonian language and culture, and was to be systematically brainwashed so that his former life would be forgotten. Aye, that would be right. Not so, because God was in control, and God used him in an extraordinary way. He started as an imported hostage and grew in political stature to become a person of importance, despite his faith in God. His lot was very similar to the believer in the world today striving to obey God in the midst of spiritual opposition. 
In time, King Nebuchadnezzar changed Daniel's name to Belteshazzar, and then his culture and his surroundings. But you could not change who he was, for he was a man of God, and the king's attempts to conform this man to paganism fell flat. Daniel would not be brainwashed and would not renounce his faith. He proved that you could change the outside without changing the heart. There's a lovely verse in Romans 12 too. Don't be conformed to the world. And J.B. Phillips, who wrote the New English Bible, puts it this way. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mould. Oh boy, it sure will try. In his golden years, probably in his mid-80s, we learn of the well-known incident in the lion's den. At this point in Old Testament Bible history, Darius, or Darius, is now king, and he appoints Daniel to serve as one of the three royal administrators over around 120 princes. He is now reckoned as a top-rate diplomat, but with the additional qualities of honesty, integrity, and faith. His success, however, makes his colleagues very jealous. That ugly word, jealousy. And they search for evidence against him. Finally, after much searching, one declares, we will never find any basis for charges against this man unless it has something to do with the law of his God. For when they had scrutinized his life, they discovered he was faithful in his duties, he was faultless in his character, and he was fervent in his prayers. Three marks of godliness, even unbelievers can see. His flaw was his prayer life, regular and God-honoring. And that was how they would catch him out. Makes me ask myself, if I was arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict me? <laughs> the evidence against Daniel as a man of prayer was overwhelming. So the schemers hatched a plot. A 30-day law forbidding prayer was passed and the king, tricked by his princes, signed it. The outcome of it all was that Darius realises he has been tricked but cannot repeal the law and Daniel was sent to his fate. The story we all know from Sunday school days, how could a man over 80 survive this? However, with God, anything and everything is possible. In Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 31, you read the famous words, if God is for us, who can be against us? And another lovely little verse, 1 Samuel 2, those who honour me, I will honour. What lessons we can learn from this? Daniel, you see, had discovered something worth living for. No, he wasn't afraid to die, but had the courage to live for God in a hostile, pagan world, and God delivered him. What can we in the 21st century learn from this account? I think a great deal. It is possible to live a Christian life in the midst of a secular environment. Daniel did. You have to take up your cross daily and follow him. Daniel, because of his personal integrity, made a huge impact on Darius, the mightiest man in the world at that time. You see, you never know who is watching you as a Christian and what influences you may have on them to come to faith. And lastly, the account in Daniel 6, the real hero isn't Daniel, but Daniel's God. And that same God can deliver us from a 2020 lion's den. And what do I mean by that? It could be COVID-19, it could be cancer, it could be redundancy, it could be bereavement, or any other form of suffering. For the lion's den, comes in many disguises. We must take heart and trust in God who can deliver us from whatever is troubling us. Let's remember though, God always delivers his people, but not always in the way expected. Sometimes God has to overrule our most fervent prayers because he sees the bigger picture and knows what is best for us. In the closing verses of the chapter, we see that the king issued a decree to all peoples, 
that the God of Daniel was to be feared and revered. His decree, indeed the entire chapter, remind us that our God is a living God, God endures forever, God rescues and saves. God performs wonders on our behalf. Another thought to ponder, is there a connection with our Lord Jesus in this chapter? For Jesus, greater than Daniel, was innocent, yet he was envied and hated and condemned to die. Jesus was put into a pit of death and a stone sealed it, but we all know from that pit came the glorious Easter resurrection. May we all learn from the example of Daniel, who showed what it was to seek first the will of God and to obey God rather than men. I conclude with the words of the chorus of Dare to be a Daniel, written by Philip Bliss over 100 years ago. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Earlier I spoke of my grandson Daniel. What better wish or prayer could a parent or grandparent have for their young one? That they would read and understand the wonderful truths in this account in Daniel chapter 6 as he or she grows up in the 21st century. Amen. Let us come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Loving Lord, we give thanks that we can come freely to worship you. We are inspired by stories of faith like that of Daniel. We give thanks that we have faith in you and that we know your presence in our lives. We give thanks for those who brought us to faith, who inspired us by word and by example. We pray for the outreach of the church, for those who search for an understanding of faith. In this strange time, help us to reach out to our community. We pray for all ministers and for those who lead thinking especially of Lynette, be with her, strengthen her and enable her. We pray for all of those who provide our needs, those working on the front line, bringing us food, working in shops, refuge collectors, postal workers, those working in the emergency services. We pray for those working for a vaccine, give them guidance and wisdom. Lord, we pray for those despairing in our world, for those who feel lonely or rejected, whether due to the effects of COVID or whether other issues. May they know your care and your love for them. We remember those who are unwell or those who are in hospital, thinking of Christine Walker and Margaret Hutchison. Lord, surround them and their families with your care. We pray for those who are grieving for the Lansborough family and the Bow family. Lord, be their comfort. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Help us to stay close to you, living as you would have us do. Hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.
What a great hymn of encouragement. I hope you have all enjoyed meeting up again with this Old Testament Bible hero, Daniel, and being reminded of his faithfulness. What a great witness he is to us. And despite everything, he never flinched, but fixed his eyes firmly on God. Let's pray that we keep the faith too. Let's say the blessing together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Keep safe and keep well until we meet again. <laughs>